we all of our half our half our forces in combat are reserve and national guard. We're building these camps, and the second person, the per the set number two in command of constructing every Iraq, every new Iraqi base, every facility, every everything for the Iraqi military, everything for the Iraqi military, and I was just on the military of Def ministry of defense side. There was the Ministry of Interior side. All your frontier border stations bordering Iran and uh, Turkey, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, all of your police stations throughout the entire country, thousands of facilities. All of this was being supervised by, this is a, a, a land war in the desert, being supervised by a U.S. Navy captain. And his number, there were 120 there collect money for my company. It was just a warm body. And I really don't say that um, tongue-in-cheek. I, I, really, I really was. Because what's the point when you're supposed to be, you've heard the term SME, subject matter expert. That's the new term they use today. That's what I was hired to be. I was a subject matter expert. And in all, in all candor, I don't mind saying this. I've been doing this stuff for 20 years when I went over there. I was a contracting officer in the U.S. General Services Administration. I've done some of the biggest real estate deals in the Washington metro area, um, indeed in the country. I'm an engineer from West Point. I, am in, I know construction. I know brokerage. I have an MBA in finance. I know real estate finance, but I wasn't wearing a uniform. I was just a warm body to collect fees for my company. Needless to say, got a little discouraging. And then when I went to my company's management, I I could have pounded sand because they weren't going to do anything that was against what the U.S. military told them to do. And the thing about it was, um, so my book gets into my book gets into a lot of things. My book my book starts in 1991. Uh, the first page of the book is the night that the Gulf War ended, uh, when uh, George Bush Sr. ended all hostilities and uh, allowed Saddam Hussein to, to get off the hook for his invasion of Iraq. I used to poo-hoo that when people said, oh, it was just for oil, it was just for oil. Uh, I think maybe they might have had a point, because we knew that Saddam Hussein was a bad actor, and we let him stay in power, and in that culture, Correct me if I'm wrong. But in that culture, he was left alive. Not only left alive, but left to stay, and he kept his job. And he was in, he was he was a bigger player on the world stage than he was before the war. And the, the sanctions after the Gulf War, and he's keeping all that money while the, his people starve. The uh, the Iraqi economy went down the tank as a result of the, the sanctions. The Iraqi dinar. Uh, my Iraqi friends over there told me that before this invasion, it was um, three to the dollar. When I was there, it was thirteen hundred and fifty to the dollar. A f a liter of gas was twenty. I've got the, I got it in here. Twenty fills. A fill is a thousandth of a dinar. A liter of gas was 0.67 of a cent. Basically free. Now you can't get any. We bombed, we blew up all the, so the, the critical infrastructure of the country of Iraq, electrical powers, maybe three hours a day. I tell the story about how the Ministry of Defense building, which was formerly the U.S., the, the U.S., the Iraqi Parliament building, the U.S. spent $58 million renovating this building and we had no air conditioning in the 120 degree heat. That was because the brand new 1.5 kVA Caterpillar generator that was sitting out back contractor didn't check the length of the cable to connect it to the building. And for a year and a half, everybody fought and squabbled over who was going to pay for a $48,000 cable. While we had no lights or air conditioning in the Ministry of Defense building that the U.S. government paid $58 million to renovate. I could go on and on and on. But you'll have to. <laughs> um, why can I always get a laugh? <laughs> this is a serious discussion. But the, you know, get, you know, to, to wrap it up, the one thing I really want.
want to talk about, though. I really want to get into contractors and our country's use of contractors. I want to just talk for like about five minutes on that, and then I'll wrap it up. <coughs> our country's use of contractors. When I was in Iraq, and you can apply this to any conflict that the United States of America gets involved in today. I say conflict, it's not war. We don't declare war anymore. Uh, we don't do that anymore. You know, Lyndon Johnson had, uh, you know, put a gun to a few senators' heads and got the Gulf of Tonga <coughs> Resolution passed in 1964 so that he wouldn't have to get a declaration of war from uh, the U.S. Congress, which is unconstitutional. Okay? Mentioned in my book, Senator Wayne Morse was one of two U.S. senators that voted against that because he said it's unconstitutional. He was right. But we just kept right on doing it. Once you open up that, that Pandora's you know, box, once you crack the door open. And what happens is our presidents, all of them, can avoid getting a, a, a war resolution from Congress, which means they don't have to get the buy-in of the American people, which means they can go over and get involved in police actions, which means that our goals and objectives don't have to be solid or clearly defined or real, like weapons of mass destruction, for example, which were never found in this, 2003, by the guy that I helped get elected. And, um, uh, and then, not only then we get involved, but then, who do we send over? Well, we send over soldiers. It's all who's wearing a uniform. But then we augment that with contractors, like security contractors like Blackwater and Triple County. There's a couple of new ones out there now. <coughs> about two weeks after I got back from Iraq, I'm reading in the paper about the Nisar Square massacre in Baghdad, where 17 Iraqis were slaughtered by Blackwater contractors. If a civilian, if an American civilian paid with U.S. tax dollars is doing the job that a soldier should and could be doing, that person's a mercenary. I don't care what anybody says. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. They're a mercenary. Okay? It all gets back to, well, gee, we don't even declare war anymore. So we don't declare war. We have flimsy reasons for going. And hey, contractors are fighting it. The American people, hey, they don't care because it's not a soldier. And all Americans care about is soldiers' deaths. I talk about them, and I also talk about contractor deaths. But all the attention is paid when a casket comes back draped in a, in a flag. But when a contractor is killed, they come back in a pine box, and it's a pauper's burial. But who cares? They're making all that money. So what's the problem? And their companies are making all that money. And their shareholders are very happy. And I get into all that in my book. And in conclusion, to wrap it up, my, my, I'm just one guy here, okay? But I saw, but I've been in the military, I was a political appointee, and I've been in Iraq, and, I, and I'm a businessman. And I, it, it bothered me so much the way the first Gulf War ended in 91, and then the, the sanctions, but oh, what the heck, I'm over here. But then I go over there and see the results of all that with my own eyes. And then I see the results of Paul Rimmer disbanding the Iraqi Ministry of Defense and the Iraqi Ministry of Interior. And I saw what happened. And what happened was we did not, I need to say this too, I'm glad, thank God I remember this. The invasion was on flimsy grounds. We did not invade with enough force, overwhelming force. Overwhelming force, meaning I don't need that much, I don't need a cannon to kill the fly. I don't care. If you got the cannon, use the cannon. We went with a fraction of the forces needed to do the job right, and then Paul Bremer disbanded the Ministry of Defense and Ministry of Interior, thereby, instead of keeping an eye on all these forces, and training them and, and, and guiding them and mentoring them, and keeping these guys busy, he fired them all. Now, they hate the United States, and oh, by the way, they've got each got an AK-47 with ammunition. And because of the sanction, 